it being uh, a variety of other issues working with Senator Lieberman on trying to address climate change, I have a clear record of bipartisanship. The situation today cries out for bipartisanship. Senator Obama has never taken on his leaders of his party on a single issue. And we need to reform. And so let's look at our records as well as our rhetoric. That's really part of your, your mistrust here. And now I suggest that maybe you go to some of these organizations that are the watchdogs of what we do, like the Citizens Against Government Waste or the National Taxpayers Union or these other organizations that watch us all the time. I don't expect you to watch every vote. And you know what you'll find? This is the most liberal big spending record in the United States Senate. I have fought against excessive spending and outrageous. I have fought to reduce the earmarks and eliminate them. Do you know that Senator Obama has voted for, is proposing $860 billion of new spending now? New spending. Do you know that he voted for every, for every increase in spending that I saw come across the floor of the United States Senate while we were working to eliminate these pork barrel earmarks? He voted for nearly a billion dollars in pork barrel earmark projects, including, by the way, $3 million for an overhead projector at a planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. My friends, do we need to spend that kind of money? I think you have to look at my record and you have to look at his. Then you have to look at our proposals for our economy. Not $860 billion in new spending, but for the kinds of reforms that keep people in their jobs, get middle-income Americans working again, and getting our economy moving again. You're going to be examining our proposals tonight and in the future, and energy independence is a way to do that, is one of them, and drilling offshore and nuclear power are two vital elements of that, and I've been supporting those, and I know how to fix this economy and eliminate our dependence on foreign oil and stop sending Senator, $700 billion a year overseas. Well, we've run out of time. We have this one, one minute discussion period going on here. There are new economic realities out there that everyone in this hall and across this country understands that there are going to have to be some choices made. Uh, health policies, energy policies, and entitlement reform. What are your, going to be your priorities in what order? Which of those will be your highest priority your first year in office and which will follow in sequence? Oh, Senator that, McCain. That, that, the three priorities were health. The three, health, health care, energy, and entitlement reform, Social Security and Medicare. In what order would you put them in terms of priorities? I'd, I think you can work on all three at once, uh, uh, Tom. I, I think it's very important that we reform our entitlement programs. My friends, we are not going to be able to provide the same benefit for present day workers that we are going, that present day retirees have to, today. We're going to have to sit down across the table, Republican and Democrat, as he did in 1983 between Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill. I know how to do that. I have a clear record of reaching across the aisle, whether it be Joe Lieberman or Russ Feingold or Ted Kennedy or others. That's that's my clear record. We can, we can work on nuclear power plants, build a whole bunch of them, create millions of new jobs. We, we have to have all of the above, alternate fuel, alternative fuels, wind, tide, solar, natural gas, clean coal technology. All of these things we can do as Americans, and we can take on this mission, and we can overcome it. My friends, some of the $700 billion ends up in the hands of terrorist organizations. As far as health care is concerned, obviously everyone is struggling to make sure that they can afford their premiums and that they can have affordable and available health care. That's the next issue. But we can do them all at once. There's no, and we have to do them all at once. All three you mentioned are compelling national security requirements. I'm trying to play by the rules that you all established. One minute for discussion. Senator Obama, if you would give us your list of priorities. Uh, there are some real questions about whether everything can be done at once. We're going to have to prioritize, uh, just like a family has to prioritize. Now, I've listed the things that I think have to be at the top of the list. Uh, energy, we have to deal with today because you're paying 380 here in Nashville for gasoline, and it could go up. And it's a strain on your family budget, but it's also bad for our national security because countries like Russia and Venezuela and you know, in some cases, countries like Iran uh, are benefiting from higher 
oil prices. So we've got to deal with that right away. That's why I've called for an investment of $15 billion a year over 10 years. Our goal should be, in 10 years' time, we are free of dependence on Middle Eastern oil. And we can do it. And when JFK said, we're going to the moon in 10 years, nobody was sure how to do it, but we understood that if the American people make a decision to do something, it gets done. So that would be priority number one. Health care is priority number two, because that broken health care system is bad not only for families, but it's making our businesses less competitive. And number three, we've got to deal with education so that our young people are competitive in a global economy. But just one point I want to make, Tom. Uh, Senator McCain mentioned looking at our records. We do need to look at our records. Senator McCain likes to talk about earmarks a lot, and that's important. I want to go line by line through every item in the federal budget and eliminate programs that don't work and make sure that those that do work work better and cheaper. But understand this. We also have to look at where some of our tax revenues are going. So when Senator McCain proposes a $300 billion tax cut, a continuation not only of the Bush tax cuts, but an additional $200 billion that he's going to give to big corporations, including big oil companies, $4 billion worth, that's money out of the system. And so we've got to prioritize both our spending side and our tax policies to make sure that they're working for you. That's what I'm going to do as President of the United States. All right, gentlemen, uh, I want to just remind you one more time about time. We're going to have a larger deficit than the federal government does if we don't get this under control here before too long. We, uh, Senator McCain, for you, we have our first question from the Internet tonight. A child of the Depression, 78-year-old Fiora from Chicago. Since World War II, we have never been asked to sacrifice anything to help our country except the blood of our heroic men and women as president, what sacrifices, sacrifices will you ask every American to make to help restore the American dream and to get out of the economic morass that we're now in? Well, Fiora, I'm going to ask the American people to understand that there are some programs that we may have to eliminate. I first proposed a long time ago that we would have to examine every agency and every bureaucracy of government and we're going to have to eliminate those that aren't working. I know a lot of them that aren't working. One of them is in defense spending, because I've taken on some of the defense contractors. I saved the taxpayers $6.8 billion in a deal for an Air Force tanker that was done in a corrupt fashion. I believe that we have to eliminate the earmarks. And sometimes those projects, not, not the overhead projector that Senator Obama asked for, but some of them that are really good projects will have, will have to be eliminated as well. And they'll have to undergo the same scrutiny that all projects should in competition with others. So we're going to have to tell the American people that spending is going to have to be cut in America. And I recommend a spending freeze that except for defense, veterans affairs, and some other vital programs We'll just have to have across the board freeze. And some of those programs may not grow as much as we would like for them to. But we can establish priorities with full transparency, with full knowledge of the American people and full consultation, not done behind closed doors and shoving earmarks in the middle of the night into programs that we don't even, sometimes we don't even know about until months later. And by the way, I want to go back a second. Look, we can attack health care and energy at the same time. We're not, we're, not, we're not rifle shots here. We are Americans. We can, with the participation of all Americans, work together and solve these problems together. Frankly, I'm not going to tell that person without health insurance that I'm sorry you'll have to wait. I'm going to tell you Americans, we'll get to work right away. And we'll get to work together. And we can get them all done, because that's what America's been doing. Senator McCain, thank you very much. Senator Obama. You know, a lot of you remember uh, the tragedy of 9-11 and where you were on that day and, you know, how all of the country was ready to come together and make enormous changes uh, to make us not only safer but to make us a better country and a, and a, and a more unified country. And, you know, President Bush did some smart things at the outset, but one of the opportunities that was missed was when he spoke to the American people, he, he said, uh, go out and shop. That wasn't the kind of call uh, 